So Fallout New Vegas has a lot of weapons. Like a lot of weapons. Way too many weapons. So I decided it would be a bit of a fun run if I tried and, well, used them all. Yeah, I'm not talking about using each weapon only once. I mean I'm talking about using each weapon once. I'm gonna go through the game, I'm gonna find every weapon in the game, base game mind you, I'm not doing DLCs, and I'm gonna use them. The rules of this run are as follows. I'm only allowed to use each weapon once, by which I mean I can get a kill with it, and certain ones like mines I am only allowed to use once, so on and so forth. Any special rules for any special weapons I'll bring up later. Now this may not sound like a lot, but in reality there are around 110 weapons in New Vegas, and although a fair few of them you can get pretty easily, the rest are, well, downright impossible to get. Well, not exactly, but some of these were very, very hard, so this run ended up taking a little while. Anyways, that's enough of my blabbering around for now, I'm gonna start the run. One more thing before I get this run going in full swing, you see that little number in the corner of the screen? That's how many weapons I have left in the game, and I'll be dropping the number every time I make a kill with a weapon. I figured I'd include that just so you guys can follow along a bit easier. Anyways, loading in, I go through the usual paces in Good Springs, by which I mean I use a character creator, make my usual monstrosity, and then head to the specials machine. I tried to balance my specials and stats as best I could, as it's kind of hard to predict using every single weapon, so I focused mainly on strength so I could carry stuff, while also sinking a good amount of points into intelligence perception, and of course agility. I decided to dump all the points off charisma and endurance, because honestly I could get some pretty good protection, but it's damage that I'm mostly worried about. Inside Doc Mitchell's house I get a few weapons including a laser pistol and knife, and all the weapons he gives me at the exit which was a straight razor and a 9mm pistol. One more thing I'd like to say before I exit the doctor's house is that I also took Wild Wasteland as it was a necessary perk. You see there are a few weapons in the game that you have to have Wild Wasteland for. Once I was outside the doctor's house I made my way straight to Chet so I could buy any weapons he had on him. Nothing too special, just the usuals, the shovel, boxing tape, and 22 caliber pistol. I decided to use my knife on Joe Cobb, as early game weapons are going to start really losing power soon, so I decided to focus getting rid of all of those first. Joe Cobb was an easy target, and once I gathered all the town, they killed the powder gangers like they always could, because let's face it, they didn't need me there. With my business in Good Springs finished, I started making my way towards Prim for some reason, and on my way I encountered Burton Thorn, and I decided to put him out of his misery using the boxing tape. This is a really, really bad weapon, so I was glad I got it out of the way right away. As of right now, I didn't have any real goals. Realistically, I just wanted to stockpile as many weapons as possible, so if I ever ran into a situation where I needed them, I'd have them. I figured Prim would be a bit of an obvious stop, as it's Prim, it's early game XP, plus there are a couple weapons there. While I was there, I was able to pick up a few things like the landmines that sit on the bridge, and I was also able to pick up a few things off Johnson Nash. Other than that, I promoted the one true sheriff, before making my way to the Mojave outpost to mark it on the map. That was more so me being an autopilot as I had no real reason to be there. Can't really do any of the quests there besides recon at Nipton, because I can't really waste any weapons as of right now. Or at least I thought I couldn't. Realistically I had a lot more weapons than I needed, so saving this many weapons early game was altogether pointless, especially since they were all really really bad weapons. Anyways enough about that, I made my way to Nipton so I could get some XP, and while I was there I beat Oliver Swanick's skull in with a tire iron. Oh yeah, I also blew up Volpes and killed one of his guys with a shovel. This chain of kills got me a throwing spear, a ripper, and a machete which are all welcome additions to the arsenal, and I wound up returning to the Mojave outpost and killing one random NCR soldier just for his service rifle. This ended up being a pretty big waste, as I found a couple dead NCR people in the future that all had service rifles. I was annoyed by this, but what am I going to do? With a few weapons on my person, I figured it was high time to start making my way to New Vegas. On my way there, I obviously passed by Sloan as I was planning to take the Black Mountain shortcut, and I was using a Powder Ganger uniform. This was because I wanted to avoid as much conflict on my way there, but the thing is, by doing that, I of course made all the quarry workers hostile. Was this stupid? Of course, but it ended up coming in handy, as I was able to guide the workers' union straight into a Deathclaw. The baby Deathclaw managed to rip them all into pieces, which got me two sledgehammers, a lead pipe, and Chomps' hat. To commend him for the efforts, I wore that hat for the rest of the run. That was probably a mistake considering I got some really good armor sets towards the end, but you know. Nothing else really happened on the way over to Vegas, except I passed by Neil and I decided to shove a powder charge down his pants just so I could get his hunting rifle. It worked, so I'm not complaining. Once I reached Camp McCarran because I was planning on taking the monorail, I saw that one unique cowboy rifle. I, I can't remember the name. A neat little trick I figured out about New Vegas is that you could use something like a 9mm pistol to actually shoot weapons out of people's hands, 
Well, technically any gun works, but the 9mm pistol has a pretty good chance of not breaking it. I used that to disarm that one first recon dude, and then I picked up the cowboy repeater. This puts a decent unique weapon in my hands, and this is where I came up with a bit of a rule for unique weapons. You see, a lot of unique weapons are just doubles of other weapons, so I didn't actually include them in the original count. Also, some of them are very, very hard to get, and I didn't feel like wasting three weeks of my time chasing down random unique weapons. Instead, I decided that I would have a bit of a, I guess, a clause. Uh, is this a clause? I don't know. I'd have something ready just in case I got a unique weapon. The rules I came up with is that a unique weapon can be used as a weapon, so I could use it as its weapon in the counter, or I could just not use it. Another option would be I could kill someone and not count it, and I think that's fair. I'll tell you right now, I only did that once though. Anyways, with a decent cowboy repeater in my inventory, I was for sure ready to enter the strip, so I took the monorail over and I was finally ready to confront Benny. Poor Miss Chenandler Bong didn't even know what was about to hit him. As soon as I entered the tops, I handed in all my equipment, and then used spiked knuckle dusters to cave Benny's skull in. He didn't even get a chance to fight back, so I was able to get in and out pretty quick. I didn't though. Instead, I decided to use a straight razor to kill one of his guards so I could get their SMG. That gun can be kind of a hard find, so I decided it was good to grab one now rather than later. Realistically, I don't have any other business in the strip, so I decided to retreat all the way to Freeside, where I killed old Ben with a cleaver. He has a 44 Magnum, which I guess it's free, so I took it. I ended up shooting myself in the foot here, you'll see why, as this got me hated by Freeside. Speaking of Freeside, I decided to make my way into the Silver Rush and procure some of their equipment. I then bombed them for some reason, and then killed Simon. By the way, this is where I use that unique rule, because I killed Simon with the Van Grass Plasma Pistol, which is a unique weapon, so I got him killed with that, and I later got a Plasma Rifle kill as well. I also had to kill the Van Graff's Crier, but I just used my laser pistol from Doc Mitchell's on him. Once again, another really early game weapon. Obviously, killing the Van Graff's got me a ton of weapons, like, I mean, a lot, but I ended up having way too many, so I disposited some of them, as well as a bit of junk, into a nearby dumpster. You're probably questioning why this is important, but there's actually a really good reason why it's important. You see, I forgot that I put those items there, and one of the things I left in there was an egg timer. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but it'll be more important later. I decided I'd side with Mr. House this playthrough, so I'm gonna have to go to the fort at some point, and I decided now would be the time. Of course, what this means in my terms is that I procrastinated like crazy, ran around in random circles and got distracted, and wasted way too many weapons. To start, I dumped both the recharger rifle and bladed gauntlet in Freeside by killing two random thugs, making me two weapons shorter. This was mainly because I did need to drop a bit of inventory so I could have some carry weight left over, but still it was a bit of a waste. While I was on the way to the fort, I decided to check out the gunrunner's inventory, and while I was there, I was ambushed by one of the most evil creatures I've ever seen. I cannot tolerate this disgusting thing in my world, so I destroyed it with the plasma pistol. I decided to make my way to the fort through Nipton, and while I was making my way there, I ran into a random viper, and I decided to use the police baton on it. Once again, another huge waste. I also eventually made my way to Camp Searchlight just so I could mark it on the map, because I need to go there later, mind you. And while I was there, I killed a ghoul trooper with a pool cue, and a glowing one with my baseball bat. Unnecessary, but at least I have a few weapons out of my inventory, finally. While I was by Camp Searchlight, I decided to grab a unique weapon that I honestly didn't even know was in the game. In fact, I didn't even know that its base weapon was in the game. By Camp Searchlight is a crashed vertebrate, and underneath the crashed vertebrate is the Tesla Cannon. I have never seen this thing in any Fallout game, and so my mind was blown when I found it. First, I had to get to the dang thing, and the thing is, it's surrounded by robots. A lot of them. From what I counted, five sentry bots and about six Mr. Handys. Ah, yes, New Vegas. The good news is I had stockpiled a few pulse grenades and pulse mines, so I used them on the sentry bots. By the way, the rule I'm coming up with mines is I'm allowed to throw down as many as I want, but as soon as something dies, I have to stop putting them down. If something dies to the mines afterwards, that's not my business. The only thing is, once something dies, I can't put down any more mines. This really only came into play here when I managed to kill two sentry bots with a group of mines. Explosives have a similar rule. If I kill multiple things with a single grenade, that's fine, as long as I don't throw a second grenade after something's already dead. Anyways, even with all my pulse weapons used, I wasn't able to kill all the robots, and in fact a good chunk of them were left, so I wound up having to run straight to the bottom of the pit, grab the Tesla cannon, and then get out. This thing is really cool and honestly one of my favorite weapons in New Vegas now, but I only got to use it once. I did showcase it a bit here, so that if any of you guys like me have never touched this weapon, you guys get to see what it's like. By the way, I'm doing this with any other interesting weapons I find. Honestly, half of these I didn't even know existed. 
On my way out of the Crash Burter Bird, I got literally ambushed. Like, I'm not kidding, it was a straight up ambush. I did not see it coming. I'm a little sad to admit that I actually got scared when I heard the fighting music start. Anyways, by some absurd, strange miracle, Long Fuse Dynamite ended up saving my butt. You see, I already wasted Dynamite by blowing up Volpes. Well, it wasn't really a waste, it got me a Ripper, but still, I wasted it. And a bunch of Vipers ended up grouping up. I somehow, and I do mean somehow, managed to kill all of them with Long Fuse Dynamite. This got me a grenade launcher, not just a rifle, a launcher, and a handful of weak melee weapons. For once, I could really say, Long Fuse Dynamite actually came in clutch. Now that I was apparently satisfied with how many weapons I wasted, I decided now was finally time to go to the fort. When I got there, I decided peace was not an option for some reason, and embedded a throwing spear somewhere in Lucullus's head. I then took the raft over to the fort, and chaos ensued. Prepare yourself, because I'm about to list off a bunch of weapons. First off, I used my plasma grenades and mines on Caesar. I laid out all the mines in the middle of the arena, and then I was ready to kite Caesar around them. This didn't really work out though, it just killed a couple of his guards, so I had to use grenades anyways to finish him off. Luckily, no duh, mines and grenades are AoE, so I was able to kill the rest of his guards with the plasma grenades. Then the rest of the fort caught up to me. I wound up using both my frag grenades and mines on the rest of the punch club that was left, and it took care of most of them except Lucius. The dumb idiot kept following me wherever I went, so I had to use the 22 caliber SMG on him. Oh yeah, and I wasted my machete on that stupid wall jumping dog. I honestly hate that thing. Every time, because I would jump over to the arena and that's how I'd lay out the plasma mines, and every time the thing would jump over the wall with me, and it would just detonate all the mines if I wasn't careful. I didn't have to get any more kills after that, thankfully, and so I ran all the way to the bottom of the weather station and got ready to reprogram Mr. House's robots. Is that what we're doing? Are we reprogramming them? Oh, I haven't looked at New Vegas' story in a really long time. No, 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 you're powering them up. Yeah, you're powering them up. Anyways, I got ready to power up Mr. House's robots. Unfortunately, the weather station guards followed me in there because you're kind of supposed to kill them, and I ended up having a lot of trouble with them. Like, a lot of trouble. Because this is New Vegas, the guards of course decide that I'm the bigger threat rather than the giant robot turrets that are trying to kill them. Also, they seem to be in agreement with the giant robot turrets as they only targeted me as well. This meant I was just getting destroyed literally the entire time. I eventually got the job done, so I was able to get out of there, and I went back to Freeside for some reason. I then killed two random people, with the recharger pistol and dusters. Again, needless waste, but after all, that's the name of my character. With Caesar dead and the Securitrons powered up, I decided it was time to go on another trip where I got a bunch of weapons again. I was starting to run out, you see. My first weapon was this machine, and how you get it is basically you turn in that one dude, uh, what's his name? Contreras. You turn in Contreras, who's in Camp McCarran. Basically, you have to read his terminal in order to do that. You have to have 50 in science, and since I had that, I was able to turn him in easily. And this got me this machine. This machine is a true unique weapon, in that there are no other weapons like that. Unless you have DLCs, then of course there are other weapons like that, because the DLCs ruin New Vegas. Anyways, this machine is an M1 Garand, and it's pretty cool. Nothing too flashy, but it's pretty cool. After I was done getting this machine, I decided this run was missing one thing. Aliens. With Wild Wasteland, obviously the aliens spawn in over in the left side of the map. I'm there a couple times, but honestly I'm never on that side of New Vegas. So I've never actually seen the aliens, or touched the alien blaster for that matter. Yes, some of you are probably screaming at me in the comments, but oh well. The aliens were surprisingly tanky, but I was able to use a single shotgun up close, as well as a cowboy rifle from a distance. The last alien I didn't want to take any chances, so I used the plasma rifle to take him out. Once the captain was dead, I pulled the alien blaster off his corpse, as well as his buddy's tri-beam lasers. I'd put both of these to pretty good use later, but that's later. Right now, we need to talk about now. Now, of course, it's time for the boomers. First things first, I used the golden gloves on George once I got there, because I realized I had yet to use boxing gloves this game. I'm glad I got those out of the way now, because imagine if I figured out that I hadn't used them while I was at Hoover Dam. Dodging the artillery is child's play by now, especially since I have some reinforced combat armor, so getting to the boomers wasn't too difficult. Once I was let inside, I made sure to pull the key off Pearl's filing cabinet, as I would need that for Vault 34 later. Originally, when I started this run, I thought I would side with the boomers. Well, things change, you know? When the opportunity presents itself, you take it, right? Yeah, all the boomers decided to group up, and I was able to steal a missile launcher while I was here, and so I mean, like, they're practically inviting me to do it. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. No, that was a mistake. Sure, I killed about 20 boomers with a single rocket, but I ended up having to waste my combat knife, my lead pipe, my sledgehammer, my laser rifle, and my rebar club all on random boomers, as well as my 357 Magnum. I then had the longest fist fight ever with someone's grandma, and it went on for about 10 minutes. Well, since I have 10 minutes of your time, I have a funny story because it was kind of happening while I was filming this. Recently, I got a new dog. 
Big old German Shepherd, known him since he was a puppy. Real cute, he behaves really well. But I also have a cat, and I was a little worried when I got him, oh no, he's gonna eat the cat, or something like that, I don't know. I was kind of right, the cat and the dog don't really get along, I mean, it's a cat and a dog, when do they ever get along? But the funny thing is, they both hate being alone. Whenever I'm recording, my cat sits with me in my room. Recently, the dog has started sitting with me while I'm recording as well. So this time when I was recording the whole boomer segment, both of them were in the room with me. If the dog gets anywhere near the cat, the cat goes crazy, he starts hissing at him and he gets all like bunched up and his tail gets all big, but he won't actually leave, he'll just sit there. So he was on my desk, in front of my TV, hissing frantically at the dog, while I'm just trying to beat up someone's grandma. He eventually calms down and lays down, but he's still blocking the entire left half of my screen, mind you. And they're just staring at each other. And I'm just in the middle of it because they're just randomly staring at each other and I'm just trying to play some New Vegas. Anyways, I pause the game because I'm a little worried, and I turn around to pet the dog for a bit, then turn away to start playing the game again, and he legit grabs my chair. Like, I'm not even kidding, he puts his paw on my chair and turns it towards him. It's a big dog, he can do that. My cat gets mad because I was petting him, and he starts trying to do the same thing to my chair, but because my cat isn't all that big, he just gets stuck and ends up falling down. Anyways, all this is happening while I'm still punching Pearl. That's how long it took. It took that long. Speaking of things taking long, this recording's taking forever, so let me wrap this little section up. After I finally finished killing Pearl, I decided it was time to deal with Raquel, as killing her gets you an automatic grenade launcher, which are kind of rare. I decided that the Ripper was the perfect weapon for her, so I used it and it was a pretty easy kill. I then used the service rifle to kill Loyal, and my grenade rifle to kill a couple boomers and got a fat man from it. Altogether, a pretty worthwhile trip, so I'm glad it happened the way it did. Well, except for the 10 minutes of my life, I lost punching Pearl. With the boomers dealt with, I returned back to Mr. House to report my work. He then sent me to deal with the Amurtas, and I didn't have time with that, so I killed the receptionist with... Oh, crap. I killed her with a 9mm submachine gun. Okay, this was really, really bugging me. You have no idea how happy this makes me that I figured this out. The entire time since then, I didn't write it down in my notes, mind you. I didn't know where I used the 9mm submachine gun. I know I used it, I just didn't know where. Oh my god, I finally remembered it. Oh, that took so long. Well anyways, now that my little crisis is over and I could get back to recording, I decided I would get the Pulse gun from Vault 34. Now if any of you guys know that this gun exists, you'll know how hard it is to get on a regular playthrough. Imagine one where you can't really kill anything. Now, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I hate New Vegas. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but I really, between the big three fallouts, New Vegas is my least favorite. Something about it. No other game frustrates me like New Vegas does. I legit wanted to take my microphone cord and strangle myself with it during the section just because it was so frustrating. First off, there's about 50 ghouls inside Vault 34. All of them can chase you practically everywhere, and since all the doors are busted, you can't really lock them inside rooms. They were chasing me throughout the entire vault, and I had to put the game on very easy just to stop them from insta-killing me. Eventually, I was able to figure out what I was supposed to do because I've never been in Vault 34. So I got all the codes I needed, I ran into all the different rooms, I got lost about four times. Four times lost in that dumb vault because it's a copy of paste of every other vault in the game, and it drives me insane. And I finally unlocked all the doors, got into the armory, and I died. Again, and again, and again. By the way, I had to use the grenade launcher on the Overseer. I realized I forgot that I mentioned that. I used the grenade launcher on the Overseer's turrets and the 9-iron on the Overseer himself. Anyways, once I got into the armory, I realized there were a bunch of glowing ones in there, and I wound up getting punched into a corner. While panicking, I used the auto grenade launcher to spray shots everywhere, and I managed to kill everything in the room. It also scattered all the good weapons, but oh well. I did get a minigun here, so it was worthwhile, and the thing I was really here for was the pulse gun. This is a completely unique weapon, and it's kinda cool, but I really wish I could use it more than once, because it would've come in so handy during the fight with the Brotherhood later on. The sort of downside of this run is I got a lot of really cool weapons, and I just couldn't use them because I'm only allowed to use them once. Oh well, I'm subjecting this on myself, so instead here's a brief demonstration on what the pulse gun does. Basically, you know the pulse grenades, it's that in gun form. You see, anyone in power armor, any robots, anything like that, takes extra damage and they take a lot of extra damage. In fact, it can two-shot a Brotherhood Paladin, which is really, really useful. If you can actually use weapons, I'm sure getting it isn't so bad, but since I couldn't, it was so painful. Anyways, after I got out of Vault whatever, I made my way to Camp Gulf as it's right there because I wanted a Ranger Sequoia. I then went inside and killed a couple NCR Rangers with the minigun and tri-beam laser, just so I could get their armor. Finally happy with my little murder spree on the NCR, 
I decided it was finally time to move on with House's quest, and I decided it was time to go do the Brotherhood. Now I came up with a plan for dealing with the Brotherhood at the beginning of the run. The thing is, plans change, and I'm an idiot so I didn't really get it done all that well. You see, I was supposed to attack the Brotherhood when I had a 75 in science, that way I could reprogram their turrets to kill them. Well, I did that, but the thing was, I wanted to kill the Brotherhood now, and I didn't exactly have a 75 in science, I only had around 60. Well, I decided I'd get crumbs of XP wherever I could, so I started by killing Dobson with his radio, which is not a weapon, so I don't have to actually waste anything on him. I then realized that doesn't actually give me any XP, so I had a bit of a problem. Luckily, my humongous brain came in handy again here, as I was able to find a Powder Ganger camp, first dismantle all their mines, and then kill one of them with the Varmint Rifle, which for some reason I was holding on to this entire time. This finally got me enough XP to level up, and put enough points into science so that I could actually hack their turrets. Now it's time for the crap. Okay, to start, I thought this plan was foolproof. I mean, the Brotherhood always dies to the turrets. They're so strong, they always take them out. It's so easy. Except not this time. The one run, the one run where it actually matters that the turrets have to kill all the Brotherhood, they fail. Somehow, and I do want to stress somehow, as I've never seen this happen before, the Brotherhood took out all the Mark V turrets. Like how? Anyways, this is a problem, as although they were able to kill Elder McNamara, now the entirety of the Brotherhood's base is hostile to me, and I don't have any medics, any slasher, or a stealth boy. Okay, so luckily I'm a bit smarter than this, so I was able to figure out something. First off, I used a Plasma Caster and Defender on the Brotherhood Paladins that usually guard McNamara. If I didn't do this, they would just insta-kill me, so I had to kill them. Luckily, the Plasma Caster is an easy one-shot if I could get a stealth critical. Sadly, the Plasma Defender was a bit more iffy. If I didn't crit, the guy just wouldn't die. And that gave me a bit of trouble as there were multiple runs where I just shot the guy and he just wouldn't die and I wound up using about 64 shots and it wasn't enough to kill a Brotherhood Paladin. So yeah, things went pretty smoothly. I eventually managed to kill him and then I had Harden to deal with. Luckily, I still had the Pulse Gun so I was able to use that on Harden. It too shot him, which sped things along nicely. I would have liked to use it later on in the run, but once again, them's the rules. I can't use the Pulse Gun again. Taggart was a bit more trouble because he just runs like crazy. So I decided to bring out the old Roasty Toasty while I was fighting him and just cook all of the scribes. Once someone died, I traded it out for the Laser RCU and managed to kill Taggart. Was it a bit wasteful? Sure, but I don't mind. It ended up bringing some of the pressure down, so I was able to actually hack the Brotherhood's base and detonate it. The trip out was definitely very tough, but I was eventually able to do it after a few tries. Sadly, a few Brotherhood soldiers followed me out and this meant I couldn't actually stay. I should have taken them out if I was smart because they would have given me a couple weapons I was missing, but I wasn't smart and instead I just ran straight for the strip, and so that marks the end of the Brotherhood. Honestly, one of the hardest times I've ever had fighting the Brotherhood in any Fallout game. Killing off the Brotherhood obviously finishes up Mr. House's quest, but the thing is, although I am technically almost done with the game, I still have a lot of work to do. You see, I've used about 50 weapons, I have about 20 in my inventory, which means I'm missing a good 30 weapons. Before I can actually go to Hoover Dam and finish the game, I have to get every single one of those. That may not sound like too big of a deal, but there's a reason this 30 was left. Some of them were pretty easy, they were just weapons I overlooked and I kinda just left them lying around. And some, like the Gatling Laser, were nearly impossible to get. I'll get back to you guys on the Gatling Laser though, let's start off with some of the simpler ones. Or what I thought were supposed to be some of the simpler ones. I decided the first ones I'd get were the Bottle Cap Mine and Time Bomb, as technically I could craft those two so it should be pretty easy, right? Yeah, no. The bottle cap mine wasn't too bad, I was missing cherry bombs, but luckily you could find a couple in Freeside, so I went and grabbed those and was able to craft it. On the other hand, the time bomb though, yeah, I couldn't find an egg timer. It turns out, in the base game, there are no egg timers that actually spawn in in a single spot. You have a chance of finding an egg timer, and a pretty good one at that, but in the end of the day, it's all RNG based. The thing is, I was having so much trouble trying to find one. No vendors were selling them, no boxes had them. Nothing, I could not find one, and I actually kind of gave up on the challenge. I was still going to go through with it, mind you, it's just I kind of wrote down on my notes here that I failed because of the time bomb. I didn't, but you guys will see why later. Well anyways, a little upset that I messed up with the time bomb, I made my way to Novak to grab that gun, as well as a power fist from Cliff Briscoe. Those two were pretty easy, and so was the throwing hatchet which I bought from Chet, and then used on Dawes in the NCRF. The reason I did this was because I wanted to get it out of the way, and powder gangers have a small chance of dropping egg timers. Yes, I was still desperately looking for that. After the Powder Ganger fail, I decided to give up on the Time Bomb, 
and instead I made my way to the sort of western side of the map to start getting some of the weapons there. On my way, I got an incinerator from Cook by killing his cow queenie with a switchblade, and made my way to Red Rock so I could buy some turbo. I'm gonna have to go to Quarry Junction this playthrough to get an LMG, so I figured it'd be in my best interest to get as much turbo as possible. I also taught Jack how to make Slasher as well as buying a couple of medics, as you could stack those to get really high damage resistances. Sadly, Jack's inventory broke at some point during this run and he just stopped selling all the special chems. I was a little upset by this because the Slasher Medics combo was kind of my lifeline this run. After Red Rock, I decided to pick up the unique Dog Tag Fist Recompensance for the Fallen. I think I got that right. Out of that one guy from Cottonwood Cove's drawer. It's a pretty good weapon. I don't use a Dog Tag Fist ever but it's decent. After the dog tag fist, I went to Crimson Caravan to see if I could buy anything, and it was doing the usual New Vegas stuff. Yeah, I didn't actually manage to buy anything, but I did go to Gamora so I could get a riot shotgun. I started in there by killing a random Omerto with my hunting magnum, that way I could take a sawn off shotgun and turn that into the riot shotgun. Pretty easy work, but I died a surprising amount of times there, mainly because my veteran armor is definitely starting to break down around now. Wild Wasteland was a bit of a double-edged sword this run, as it turns out you can't get the Abilene Kid BB gun without completing the King's Quest in Freeside, so I ended up starting out that quest. I never finished it though, because when I made my way to Mick and Ralph's, I found a BB gun inside their toy chest. I wanted the unique version, but okay, this will work. While I was in Freeside, I also made sure to buy Euclid Seafinder. It's not worth anything right now, as obviously I haven't done Lucky Old Sun, but it'll be useful later. By now, I'm kind of just ping-ponging back and forth from different locations. One of those was Camp Golf, and I actually used my gauze rifle and another ranger so I could get an assault carbine. And then I used my Power Fist, Super Sledge, and Riot Shotgun all at Hoover Dam so I could get a hunting shotgun, heavy incinerator, and 12mm pistol. I then bought a normal hatchet from Blake, and ended up using that to protect him from a couple fiends that randomly attacked us. I also had to use the rolling pin on a fiend as well. Now it was here I found the elusive egg timer. You remember all that time ago when I stuffed a bunch of my junk inside a random dumpster? Yeah, I put an egg timer in there. In fact, I put multiple egg timers in there. I have never been so upset, yet so happy with myself at the same time. I literally threw away my egg timer, but I was able to fish it out of the trash. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. Luckily, with the egg timer, I could actually craft the time bomb, and you're probably wondering, what is this thing? It must be so good if it's so hard to craft. Yeah, no, it's garbage. It's so slow to blow up. I mean, it's a time bomb, no duh, and it barely does any damage. I sat on top of that thing and waited for it to explode, and it wasn't enough to kill me. Well, luckily, I had a good use for it. You have no idea how much time I spent in that dumb shop waiting for that guy's inventory to refresh. Well anyways, with the time bomb out of the way, I started going for a bit more random weapons and I started in Camp Searchlight because I could get the Holy Hand Grenade, as well as a Fire Axe from there. In order to actually get the unique Fire Axe Knock Knock, I have to kill a guy named Logan, and I just used a lever action shotgun to kill him, and then pulled the key off his corpse. I was able to get both Knock Knock and the Holy Hand Grenades without killing anything else though, so that's a win in my book. Now it's time for the real hard part of this run. You remember how earlier I mentioned that the Gatling laser was going to be the hardest weapons to get? Well, normally that's not the case. Usually you could buy a Gatling laser from Night Tours in the Brotherhood, or Gloria Van Graaff in the Silver Rush. The issue is, if you haven't noticed, I killed both of those people, so now I can't get a Gatling laser. Except I can, but there's only one left in the game. Worst of all, this Gatling laser is locked behind a pretty long quest, and I'm going to have to do a lot of work just to get it. The Gatling laser I'm talking about is one of the Gatling lasers held by one of the Enclave members, and it's only held by them if you complete their quest. I'm sure you know where this is going, so yeah, I had to do the entirety of the Enclave questline just to get a single weapon. If you don't know, there's only one way to recruit the Enclave, and that's through Arcade Ganon. First, you have to actually max out affinity with him though, so it might take me a little while to do that. Of course, first steps is to get him as a companion, and there are a couple ways to do that. Of course, you could have a high enough speech skill, which I don't. You could have a low intelligence to get a sympathy friend, or of course, as always, the way of the gay. It's far too late for me to start specking into speech, and I'm too smart to be stupid, so I guess it's mono e mono. After taking the confirmed bachelor perk, I made my way to the old Mormon fort, recruited Arcade Ganon, and there are a couple things to note about him. One, his name sounds like a gamer tag made by a 40 year old dude. Two, he has one of the best perks in the game in the form of better healing, which does exactly what it says, and three, he's a DPS powerhouse. This is the main reason I don't like companions in New Vegas. Ganon alone was able to handle anything that I encountered up until this point, so it kind of took out some of the fun from the run. I have to have him travel with me in order to actually complete the Enclave questline, so he has to stay. After visiting a few of his dialogue trigger points, like Repcon HQ and the Crash Vertebird, he started the conversation about the Enclave, which meant I could actually start doing their quest. It's really simple, you just head to different members of the Enclave, talk to them, and then they join you over at their bunker. I marked most of the areas that they're at on the map already, 
so it wasn't too difficult. The only one that actually gave me any trouble was Dr. Henry, and that's because he wants you to complete his research before you recruit him. This basically just means you have to do the Jacobstown quest, but that's not too hard. I did have to go into that coyote infest caves. Ganon followed me in there, so it wasn't too hard. Before I left, I made sure to pick up O Baby because I could sell that for caps later, and then I made my way to the Remnants bunker, which is a couple feet away from Jacobstown. After meeting with all the old Enclave members in their little bunker, Orion, one of them, decides that he doesn't want to go along with the plan, and instead wants to vaporize a bunch of NCR, as well as anyone that gets in his way. Unfortunately for him though, I picked up the unique Zap Glove, the Paladin Toaster, and since it is, well, a Zap Glove, I can take him out really easily. Like, honestly, too easily. Anyways, the reason I did all of this is because, when you kill Orion, he drops a Gatling laser. Yup. All that work was for a single gun, and now I actually have to go and get the other ones. The good news is, obviously, I just used the Zap Glove, which was another weapon on my list, and because at the end of the Enclave questline I sent Arcade Ganon away, he gave me his unique power armor. I also had to shed some extra weight, so yeah, the Triforce of Power user got shredded by a chainsaw. Well, the Gatling Laser was the last major weapon, so I guess it's finally time to wrap up these last sort of bits of the run. I mean, I still have a couple weapons left, but compared to the Gatling Laser, they should be child's play, right? Yeah, unfortunately no, nothing went right in this run, and because of that I had a couple ones that I got stuck on. First was of course Euclid Seafinder, which is something I completely forgot about. Luckily I had already been near Helios 1 to get the Paladin Toaster, so I was able to get there quickly, and the quest wasn't too bad. I mean, I had a lot to do, and the robots in the area are pretty tough, but I've upgraded to the Ganon Family Tesla Armor, which is one of the best suits of power armor in the game. After a bit of back and forth and using and abusing my science skill, I was able to fix up Helios 1, send powers to Archimedes and use the Euclid Seafinder. If you don't know, Euclid Seafinder is another one of those weapons, where if you don't google it, you'll probably never find out what it is. Basically, you find it being held by a random child, you can buy it from him for a thousand caps, and it does nothing. That is until you power up Helios 1, put the power grid to Archimedes 2, and then you have a space laser. You know, normal New Vegas stuff. It's pretty good, I mean it wipes out pretty much anything you aim at it, but it could be super finicky and it breaks a lot. I didn't want to get rid of it quite just yet, I figured I'd save it for Hoover Dam, and so I did. Before I left Helios 1, I made sure to put a few BBs in Fantastic's head, for everyone's sake. After I was done powering up Euclid Seafinder, I figured I had the worst behind me. I mean, come on, that was the last one that had a quest attached to it. But oddly enough, this is where I kind of got stuck in the run. I had written down every weapon I had left on a little list, and I was just making my way through them. And there was one that was kind of towards the bottom, and I didn't think it would be much to get, but it ruined me. I'm talking about the throwing knife. Normally this is a really easy weapon to get, it's one of the first ones you see in vendors, but the thing is, I'm so over leveled by this point, it's just not spawning. On top of that, there's no place you can actually find them in New Vegas, so that means there's no way to get the throwing knife. I didn't actually know this yet, and I ended up waiting for vendors to hopefully have it in their inventory, and they never did, and I spent so much time waiting for it, and it just didn't work out. The good news is, while I was waiting for those vendors to restock, I was able to get the Mantis Fist and Shish Kebab, which are both really rare weapons, and I'm glad I got them there. I also had to defend Blake again from a fiend. This time I used my hatchet though. After I realized the throwing knife was a lost cause and therefore accepted the failure of this run, I made my way back to the strip, killed the white glove doorman so I could get his dress cane, and then left. This left me with one weapon. The one weapon I've been purposely saving till the very end. Although I still have a few that I have to grab, the important thing is I could get those in Hoover Dam, so the only weapon I actually had to worry about was the LMG, as it's the only one I can't get from Hoover Dam. This time I'm actually under leveled so I can't actually get an LMG from vendors, but luckily there is one that spawns naturally. Of course I'm talking about the one that spawns inside the Deathclaw Nest in Quarry Junction, because my life wasn't hard enough before. Okay, I've made my way through Quarry Junction without killing things a couple times, and it's always so painful. Usually though, the good news is I'm heading to the Great Khan's camp, so I don't really have to worry about dealing with the bulk of the Deathclaws. This time I'm actually making my way to the heart of the junction, so I encountered every Deathclaw possible. A couple of tricks I picked up for this is A, spam turbo. It's the best way to dodge all the Deathclaws, and if you have to, drop the difficulty. The entire time I was in the junction, I was on very easy, because I knew if I wasn't, I'd just die. The good news is on very easy, I could use stim packs every two hits, and that can keep me alive for a little while. When I encounter the mother Deathclaw though, that's a bit more trouble. The thing can one-shot me even though I'm in one of the best armor sets in the game, as well as the fact I'm running the slasher medics combo, so I'm kind of in a sticky situation where I have to dodge it at all costs. Luckily, the Mother Deathclaw is really, really big, so it gets stuck a lot, so I was actually able to dodge past it on like my sixth attempt, and then I had the babies to deal with. They may not seem like a lot at first, 
but those stupid little bastards will chase you everywhere. Just so you guys know, this time they chased me all the way to Bonnie Springs. The Viper gang leader then chased me all the way to Red Rock. Yeah, it wasn't a pleasant experience, but I got the LMG. Now, the LMG is one of the best weapons in the game. Surely I used it on something good, right? I didn't just kill the first random NPC I saw, right? Yeah, I did. Well, with all my weapons collected, it was time to head to Hoover Dam, but first I had to do the El Dorado substation, which was really easy, as despite the fact I'm in full power armor, the heaviest gear in the game, I somehow got in and out so fast that the NCR didn't even realize I was there. I'm not kidding, even when I left, they just played the normal dialogue that happens when you first get there. With the substation powered up, I went back to the strip and got ready for Hoover Dam. Okay, I'm gonna have to list off a lot of weapons here, and it's gonna be kind of hard because Hoover Dam was a really big mess. The first kill I got was with my dog tag fist on a random centurion because I thought he might have a thermic lance. He didn't. I then used my sea finder on one of the legion's groups, and this time I was able to get a thermic lance from them. I then used the thermic lance on a random centurion, and I got nothing from that. Once inside the dam, I used the bottle cap mine and dress cane on some of the NCR heavies, and then used some of the incendiary grenades on a group of legionaries. I then tried to use the hunting shotgun on a random legion member, and my game crashed. Spoiler alert, it crashed five times while I was in the dam. After reloading, doing the entire thing again, and finally killing that one legionary with the hunting shotgun, I started using some of my leftover unarmed weapons on the NCR. The Mantis Gauntlet and Displacer Glove both got used on some random soldiers, and once I got outside, I used that gun on a random legionary to get an anti-material rifle. And then again, my game crashed. Gotta love New Vegas. Once I got my anti-material rifle, I was obviously met with the Enclave, and this is another reason I don't actually like doing their questline too much. You see, for the rest of the dam, Cannibal Johnson follows you around, and he is so strong, he can take out most of the Legion without your help. As a matter of fact, I think he can solo leg Atlantis. Well, I needed him for now at least to take out a couple Legionaries, so I kept him alive. I later killed him for his armor, though. I used a couple of my pistols and rifles to get to Lanius, and then I took out a Brahmin with the C4. Now you remember that Gatling Glazer, the thing I worked so hard for? Yeah, I used it on a random Brahmin. It is far too late to be using that gun in the game, as since everything has such a high armor rating, I can't actually damage anything with it. Well, after the biggest waste of the century, I got ready for my Hail Mary. Obviously, it's time to fight Lanius and all his boys, and it was really tough. I'm not going to list off every weapon I used here, and that's because I used a lot. On my first attempt, I killed Lanius way too fast, he didn't get a chance to spawn in any of his guys, and I had way too many excess weapons. On my second attempt, I took it a bit slower, and this time I used my alien blaster to take him out. It was pretty easy as the alien blaster is ridiculously overpowered, but honestly, he wasn't the real trouble. His backup was. I don't have the best weapons left. The worst thing I had was like, I think a multi plasma rifle, and the best thing I had was probably a ballistic fist. And honestly, against the groups of legionaries that attack you after Lanius is dead, they're not all that great. Luckily, after enough time and patience, I was able to get through them and move on to Oliver. Now, Oliver was just a straight-up nightmare. First off, I had three weapons left. If I had actually been smart, I should have only had one, the Fat Man. But no, of course, I had three. This means I had to take out Oliver and one of his guys with both a Tesla cannon and an anti-material rifle. Once again, really good weapons, but the thing is, I'm on a short fuse, sort of, because Mr. House will just wipe out Oliver and all his boys if I'm not fast enough. After many, many attempts, I electrocuted Oliver with a Tesla cannon, got one of his guys with a headshot, and then launched the fat man straight up. I then used my last turbo to get away from the shell, and once it came down, it wiped out the rest of Oliver's men. Now normally I'd say I talked to Mr. House, but I didn't. I purposely avoided him so I could pick up one of Oliver's guys' brush gun. I then ran that brush gun all the way to my emergency Brahmin, shot it, using the last weapon at my disposal, finishing the game and proving, yeah, you can beat Fallout New Vegas, using each weapon once. I didn't though. As a matter of fact, I missed two. That's right, you heard me right. I missed two weapons. The first one was obviously the throwing knife. I mean, I mentioned it already, but I just couldn't get it no matter what. I'm not too worried as it's a pretty simple weapon, and so even if I did get it, I can guarantee you I would have been able to kill someone with it. I just wasn't smart with my levels, so I wasn't able to get it. The other weapon was the nail board. The other weapon was the nail board. Something I completely forgot exists, and I was so frustrated with myself when I beat Leg Atlantis, and I found out I missed a weapon. I mean, I don't exactly blame myself, the nail board doesn't really appear in Fallout New Vegas. As far as I know, maybe the super mutants hold it, but you don't encounter so many super mutants in New Vegas, so I just didn't find it. I probably could have if I looked for it, but I couldn't even remember it existed until I beat Lanius. Upsetting, yeah, but overall I think I did pretty good with this run. I mean, it just goes to show how many weapons are in New Vegas. I was super diligent with every single weapon, and I made sure I tried to get as many as possible. Even so, even though I had lists, I had pictures, I had everything, I couldn't get all 100. 
Well, anyways, that's the end of the run. I had a lot of fun with this one, even if it was really, really challenging. And honestly, I'm surprised at how long this video took. I mean, I can't be that surprised. Looking at the raw, unedited footage, I have an hour's worth of audio. In case you're wondering, that's why my voice sounds kind of exhausted right now. It's because I've been talking for an hour. Regardless, that's all I have time for in today's video. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.